Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to see you here on this Wednesday. Uh, again, apologize, a few minutes late. You know, today uh, I was running behind on some things, so glad to see you here. We are in on day three, winning the war in your mind, part one, but day three. So, uh, with that being said, uh, once again, I want to let you know kind of the theme for the series is we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. And so today I want to focus on what we talked about this last week is our thoughts and beliefs are shaped by what or who we allow to influence us. Our thoughts and beliefs are shaped by what or who we allow to influence us. So let's not be naive. All of us are being influenced by the inputs that are taking place in our lives. So I want you to take a second to evaluate your relational circle. Who are you surrounding yourself with? And what I mean by that is there's some places uh, you can't help. Uh, maybe a place that you work, uh, some of your home situations, you, you, you can't help. Those are the ones you surround yourself with. But you can still choose uh, on who you're going to allow to influence you. And so I just want you to think about who are your close friends? Who are the ones that you have chosen to say, yeah, if I have time, I'm going to make time to be around these people. And um, I want you to evaluate whether those people are helping you to become more and more like Jesus? Are they helping you uh, in your identity reflected in who God's created you to be? Are they helping you uh, in uh, identifying areas that you might need to grow in, challenged uh, by, encouraged by, prayed, supported? Uh, One of the ways to reflect is to look in the mirror and ask, am I that person to anybody else? Uh, Sometimes, I shouldn't say sometimes, often, I hear from people like, I don't have any friends. I don't have any friends. Nobody loves me. And what I have found to be true in many, many cases are the vast majority of people, adults, who say nobody loves me, nobody's reaching out to me, happen to also be, again, vast majority of the people who are not there for other people. They have made their world about themselves. And by making your world about yourself, first, you're going to have issues and struggles as it pertains to depression and extra anxiety. I'm not talking about the ones that need medication, you know, as I have expressed, you know, with my own flying stuff. I'm just talking about just the regular, I'm just down on a regular basis because we're so self-focused. Instead, can I be a friend? Can I be influential without expecting anything in return? Because here's inevitably what you'll find. So the reason I mention that is if you're looking at your friend circle and you're like, you know what, I really don't have the kind of friends that I I really need to have, then my encouragement is this. Become the friend that you want to have. Become the friend that you want to have. So look around and start loving, encouraging, and helping other people in their relationship with Jesus in the same way that you would want to be helped in your relationship with Jesus. And all of a sudden, you will find yourself surrounded by a group of friends. The second thing I would encourage you to do is you have to be intentional. It's not going to just happen. Uh, Friendships aren't just developed. Marriages aren't just grown uh, just because we're in proximity with one another. You have to make time for the things that are really, really valuable and important to you. Because relationships can get squeezed out based on uh, our work life, based on just entertainment, based on uh, the kids, you know, taking up our lives. There's just a lot of things that can take our focus away. And what we're trying to talk about is the input. So again, evaluate our relational inputs and say, is that the group of people, the friends that I want to have influencing me with, again, I'm assuming you're a follower of Jesus Christ, knowing that as followers of Jesus Christ, We are encouraging one another as iron sharpens iron, so one man or woman sharpens another. So are we helping each other on that journey? And if you don't have that circle, then become that person to someone else, to anyone that you ask without expecting anything in return. Make a commitment to be in a men's group, a women's group, a life group. You know, and if you're like, well, I didn't find it when I went there, go to a different one. And and again, be that person and watch over time. It doesn't take long. You'll begin to receive what you are giving out to other people, do unto others as you would want them to do to you. Do you see how that works? The second part when it comes to our inputs, oh, by the way, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, bad company corrupts good character. So even if you're doing well over time, uh, it's going to corrupt. Proverbs 13, 20, walk in the way, walk with the wise and become wise, associate with fools and get into trouble. Second thing is uh, I want you to consider as you're, as you're thinking about your, your thought pattern, 
as you're processing through this, you know, um, I want you to think um, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So we're talking about relational inputs. Let's also talk about our relationship with Jesus. Do you have a regular time, a regular day, a regular uh, opportunity throughout the day where you are connecting with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Are you allowing him to change the way that you think? So if bad company corrupts good character and walk with the wise and become wise, I guess my first question should have been, uh, are we walking with Jesus? Are we having a relationship with Jesus? Not do we just go to church, that's helpful. Not just do we go to life group, that's also helpful. But do we have a relationship, relational consistent walk with him? If you want a good marriage, you have to be intentional about those things. So um, as we end today, we're going to talk about different inputs tomorrow. Uh, but I will really want to focus on those relational inputs today. So as we're walking away, here's my encouragement challenge today. Number one, evaluate your relational inputs. See if you need to add or change any of those inputs. If you don't have... Uh, those relational uh, connections, then become the person that you want to have in your life without expecting things in return and watch to see how you will develop friends over a short period of time. And then lastly, maybe most importantly, is God and our relationship with Jesus at the center of those relational inputs. That's my hope and that's my prayer as we continue to try to battle and so that we can win the war in our minds. One of those ways is by evaluating the relationships that we have with one another with Jesus at the center. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for today. And I pray that you would allow us to evaluate, you know, the circle, the core, the people we're in, that we're being influenced by and help us to choose wisely, uh, help us to be the friend and help us to be a friend of you, to, to walk in step in relationship and unity with you. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of your day and uh, we will do part four of uh, week one as we look at the other inputs you know, that affect our brain. And so I want to look at that as we kind of wrap up this week and head into this, this next sermon uh, as we look at winning the war in your mind part two. So have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 830.